I'm Lisa Leitner. Welcome to Don't IEP Alone. Make sure you click that follow button or tap that follow icon so that you are informed and notified of new episodes. I'm really excited to be kind of publishing episodes regularly. So I want to talk today about something that I brought up recently and kind of expand upon it a little bit more. And that is this notion, and I wish I had a better term for it, but I say that parents are the IEP police. And let me give you like a little bit of history. When I first started doing this in 2010, so I'm talking about maybe like 2012, 2013-ish, around there, I don't even know how I heard about it. But, you know, obviously just from networking with, with local people, but the state was hiring people to be special education compliance monitors. I don't know if every state does it the way Pennsylvania does it. Pennsylvania has some different setups because we actually had special ed here in the state in 1971. And in fact, our laws came out of a Supreme Court case, a decree, and the laws that were Pennsylvania's laws in 1971 and 72, they were the framework for IDEA you know, a few years later. So we have some weird things like these right to ed task forces and IUs, which stands for intermediate unit. And we just have a little like weird things. One of the things that we have is IEP or special education compliance monitors. And there are different, like, so you sign up to do this and you go through training and it's a paid position, but it's not, it's not a lot of money. It's a daily rate. It's, it's basically a per diem rate. And they put together these teams of three or four people. And one of them is a state employee. Like there's these state employees who oversee the whole thing. And then I don't want to say we're volunteer because we do get a stipend, but like you get the schedule and you sign up, of course, based on what's local to your house and, and your schedule and all that. And you sign up to do them. Like you, you do volunteer to do them, but you get paid if that makes sense. And then you go do them and you're in a school district for two to three days. And the schools know ahead of time. So the reason I'm telling you all of this is I want to tell you what little bit of compliance monitoring there is because I was a compliance monitor. I went through the training. I did that for, I don't even remember how long, but once you, I had two little, little kids at the time. And it was just one of those situations where you're gone all day and you have to drive. And it, by the time I paid daycare for two kids and all that, and, you know, lost that day's income for whatever client work I could do, it didn't even pay me to go. Plus, the money wouldn't even have mattered if I felt like I was making a difference or creating change. But it wasn't until I got into the system and started doing it that I was like, this is nonsense. Like, why are we even doing this? And, and I'll tell you that because I had my reservations about doing it and it didn't make sense to me. And then a colleague or a, someone who I knew at the time, another advocate, her name's Tina, she called me and she had just completed her first assignment doing a, a compliance monitor or compliance audit. And she was like, this is such bullshit. Like, she's like, I'm reading these IEPs and I can tell that these kids can't read because she was, a, she was, it was dyslexia was her, her jam. And she's like, I can tell by reading these IEPs that these kids can't read. And she said, and passing the compliance audits. Because here's the thing, and this is where I get into the parents are the IEP police. When we went around as compliance monitors, and every school district and every charter school gets monitored every five to seven years, the only thing we're checking for is administrative stuff. The things that we can prove yes or no, right? So did they provide the PWN within 10 days or did they provide the meeting invitation within so many days? Were the evaluations done within the required time frame and stuff like that? So it doesn't monitor anything substantive. It only monitors timelines. So basically what we're doing in these audits is we're going through files and we're just kind of checking off a list, right? Like this went out within five days, this went out 10, 30, blah, 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 blah. And let me add that the school district knows when they're being audited and when you're coming. So you really think that they don't clean up those files before we get there? They do. We know they do. And then there's this component of we would do family interviews and you could do a phone interview or an in-person interview with parents, parents that are handpicked by the school district. Like you really think that they're going to pick a person or a family who they're having a lot of problems with and a lot of um, disagreements with? My guess is no. 
they're not. So we would go to these audits. We would audit the files, which was just laborious and boring. And we would go through the motions of these interviews. You rarely found anything good. Like they would, like the other piece of it was that it was so phony because the school districts also know how to use these audits to their advantage. So if they want to go back to their school board and say, hey, you know, we kind of need more resources for this, or we kind of need more resources for that, they know how to kind of set these audits up and set up their evidence so that we can find a few things wrong. Because they know also that it's not realistic that every school district in the state is going to get 100% on these audits and that we're not going to find anything wrong. So they carefully like plant these quote unquote mistakes so that we would find mistakes. And it was just, it's such an incredible waste of resources, I think, because it doesn't look at outcomes. It doesn't at all look at the content and the meaningfulness, meaning like the meaning of the IEP. You know, we're now looking back at the Andrew support case, the Andrew support Supreme Court case is now almost five years old. And we look back at it and think we were so hopeful that day, like meaningful progress, like, wow, like we won, right? Supreme Court says progress has to be meaningful. And five years later, I'd argue that things are worse for our kids now than they were five years ago. But I don't want to be a total wet blanket. I'm starting to ramble. So let me reel myself back in. Parents are the IEP police. My point being, after eight minutes of this long story of how the Pennsylvania compliance monitoring process is garbage, nobody is coming in to measure how meaningful your child's IEP is. Nobody is coming in to make sure that your IEP is being followed, that it's being implemented with fidelity, that your child is making meaningful progress. Nobody is coming in behind the IEP teams and the kids and saying, did the parent have meaningful IEP participation? Because in my experience, Pennsylvania is measuring that only with the fact that they invited you to the meeting in writing with enough notice, right? They're not showing if you submitted a parent concerns letter that wasn't included, right? That's not appearing anywhere. And they're certainly not asking those folks to come to the interview. Unless you file a complaint of some kind, whether it's a due process complaint, state compliance complaint, OCR complaint, unless you file a complaint of some kind, it is assumed that things are okay. So sit with that for a minute, right? Unless you voice otherwise, it is assumed that things are okay. And that's a big deal. And this is why I encourage so many parents to get more actively involved to hopefully create systems change and to get involved in lobbying and participation and things like that because we are the foot soldiers in this fight. And there are so many anecdotes and so many things that I say to parents over the years and they nod, oh, yeah, I know, I know, I know, right? We can all collectively nod and agree with each other and validate each other that this is going on, but nobody else knows this right? The legislators don't know this unless we bring it to their attention, unless we bring it to them and say, hey, the system is broken and this is how it's affecting my child. They don't know this and it's important that we tell them. And that's why, you know, I, I offer my online advocacy training and lobbying as a part of that and why I line up guest speakers like my senator's disability policy director, because they need to hear from us. For as much as we want to hear from them and understand what's going on legislatively, they need to hear from us as far as what we're experiencing day to day in this fight. Because our, a lot of our kids aren't making meaningful progress, right? A lot of kids are out there with IEPs and they're passing, the school's passing the audit, the state audit, but their kid can't read. And I informed my friend Tina then that she, you know, she just was in disbelief. She was like, I just can't believe this. Like the stuff that we were checking on in the audit, she said, it just doesn't matter. And I was like, yep, I hear you. And I, my sentiments are the same is that the reason I did it then was I feel like you can't change a process unless you really understand what's going on. So I did that for a while. And then, like I said, it wasn't worth my time. I understood how it worked. And that's kind of what I needed to know. And you can't, change something if you really don't understand what's going on with it. So I would encourage you, all of you who are listening, you know, nationwide, 
understand what is going on in your state and in your district to collectively not only know what's going on, but create change. Who is looking at outcomes? Is anyone besides parents looking at a child's outcome? Because we haven't changed outcomes for disabled people since 1975. My child today in 2023 is facing the same future as his disabled peers from 1975. The joblessness rate is the same. The housing options are just as dire. The funding options are just as dire. He's going to live in poverty, right? Because the system is designed to keep disabled adults in poverty. We have not changed outcomes since 1975. And that's how long IDEA has been passed. Like what is different? What is better? And again, get inside these systems, dig in, figure out what's going on, and then get involved in lobbying and advocacy. So if you want to learn how to become a citizen lobbyist, it is a part of my online training course. You can go to adayinourshoes.org to learn more about the training options I offer. I have an ebook in draft format. I hope to come out with that in 2024 to help you be a better citizen lobbyist because we have to. We have to create change. Nobody is going to do this for us. Nobody is doing this for us. And because once adults, once disabled kids graduate school and become disabled adults, the adult services is such a complete shit show that the adults in the system, like they can't even worry about school anymore because like there's no accessible jobs and there's no accessible places to live and there's no accessible transportation and there's no accessible, like supposedly there's supposed to be programs that help employers, like especially small employers who maybe need to add something to their workplace to make it accessible. Like there's nothing for them. There's no incentive other than, and, and, and the adult services, so all the IEP or all the IEP, all the disability laws that are supposed to help our kids and give them access either as kids and adults. So whether we're talking ADA, IDEA, all that stuff, it's all complaint based. Unless you complain, unless we complain, it is assumed that things are fine. No one is going around and inspecting in places of employment to make sure that they're accessible. Unless someone files an EEOC complaint, like just happened with Walmart, Walmart gets away with not only being one of the largest employers in the country, they get away with discriminating against disabled people until someone complains. And then the EEOC gets enough complaints and then they go, oh, okay, we'll do something about it. We are the police in all of this. It's all complaint based. And unless you complain, it's assumed that things are okay. And they're not okay. We haven't changed employment outcomes. We haven't complained. We haven't changed community involvement, community inclusion, any of these things. We still have churches, many of them, who are denying kids the right to participate in services. Just Google it. Google Google church banned autistic kid and wait till you see how many complaints or how many news articles come up. We're not changing outcomes. We're not changing community participation and inclusion for these kids. So, and, and again, the disabled adults, they're busy enough now trying to change the adult systems. They, they just don't even have the time or the resources to look back and go, yeah, school, school sucked and it, it didn't help me. And, and it was, that was a shit show, but I, they can't, they don't have the resources to, to help because it's behind them and they have to focus on their needs now. And I don't blame them because as someone who right now is straddling the school world and the adult world, because my son's going to be 18 shortly, I'm starting to lean toward the adult world and go, wow, it's a lot worse because it's for a lot longer too. We're not only talking K to 12 and three to 21 or whatever the case may be. Like we're talking about literally the rest of his life and how he and where he's going to live. Like that is where my attention is getting drawn now, but I still will stay in the school world, but it's, it's surprisingly terrible there. So anyway, if you take nothing away from this, know that unless we speak up, unless we complain, it is assumed that things are fine. We are the IEP police. 
we are, you know, the inclusion police. We're all of it, right? If we don't speak up, it is assumed things are fine. So on that happy note, I'm bringing some pretty heady stuff during the, the holiday season. I will try to think of something a little bit brighter for next time. Please enjoy your weekend. Visit me at adayinourshoes.com, adayinourshoes.org, and I will talk to you next time. 